Hey there, folks, and welcome back to the Timbuktu campaign. Last time, under the Archonship of Wati Chilabili, we saw a five year period of peace and prosperity for the Republic, economic growth at home, and diplomatic expansion further into the Sahara up in the north, in particular with the use of a custom classical rework mission. After fighting our way through some glitchiness, we managed to get some territory up in the Adrana province, the settlements of Wadan and Azuki. Pretty distant from our territory, but they are now part of the Timbuktu Republic, and this has given us borders with the Saharan tribes of Chinguetti and Ijil. Because I missed my chance to get some discounted claims, I'm now manually getting a claim on Chinguetti, I'll also get one on Ijil once I have enough PI, just to secure the Adrar province fully. Now this has a couple of dynamics going on, so I need to talk about the Adrar province for a moment. First of all, these tribes are not particularly dangerous, they don't have the strength to raise any levies. They could, and this is a very um, hard to fathom scenario, but they could technically go to war with me, particularly together, and hire mercenaries, and the mercenaries could actually present a danger, though the mercenaries would likely have to come from the south. I can't really imagine northern mercenaries coming all the way down for this. And if they did hire mercenaries, I could just beat the mercenaries, and I'd also get lots of advance warning, because they'd be going through my territory. Putting that scenario aside, um, it's essentially not very feasible that these territories here are going to be depopulated, which is the really severe danger. I don't know if I can even repopulate these territories out here in the desert. These uh, desert tiles that um, were added by the mod seem to have some unusual properties, and I may be able to repopulate them somehow, but they're not really accessible through the normal mechanics to repopulate depopulated tiles. So getting these tags out of the picture so that there's no unpredictability there, even though I can't really think of how they could depopulate these tiles, is just a good idea in general. Also just to secure this area as fully under my control. Not to mention there is some salt out here in this desert in Chinguetti, and some salt out here in Igil, so I would be able to get a surplus of uh, salts going um, to, uh, to sell off as well, so that's quite nice too. So a little bit of economic value from this otherwise desolate and useless province. But of course its real use is in expanding the diplomatic range. Now I'll talk a bit more about the diplomatic range and my current mission in just a moment because I have to talk about that for a second. But first a quick note about barbarians. I did take a second to look around and figure out what's going on with the barb spawns. Essentially in this mod, barb spawns are not gonna be coming out of the deeper Sahara desert areas which are so uninhabitable even the barbs uh, keep their distance. But there are barbarian strongholds in these little pockets of desert next to inhabitable areas, which does make a bit more sense. There is one up here by this particular province. So this is another reason to be a bit careful as the barbs could actually depopulate. Now in my experience, barbs tend to add population and not reduce it. They can you know, damage a, like a city in some sort of sack or they could damage a larger tile by occupying it and enslaving people, but they also tend to add a population more than they remove it, particularly from low population tiles. So this barb fortress may or may not present a depopulation problem, or risk I should say. Nonetheless, wherever the capital of this province ends up being, likely in Wadan, but we shall see. I definitely want it to be fortified, sort of like I fortified the Tichit province. Which incidentally, once I have this territory controlled, may be technically and literally impossible to be reached by barbs without getting through a fort first, though having my forts not be paid for would be quite nice, so keeping the fort at Tichit for now is probably a good idea. I'll come back to that later. Now, with all of that said, these tiles are not likely to be depopulated super easily. What is still a bit of a mystery is exactly what's going on with the expand into Sijalmasa. Uh, mission, which I just picked up at the end of the last episode. This mission alleges to give me a route into the northern Sijilmasa Desert, an unfathomably valuable acquisition for the Republic as this would give me not the best tile in the world, it's a horse desert tile and it's very far away from my core territory, but it's not very far away from the northern uh, areas at the edge of my world, this of course being the western Mediterranean um, sort of market area which getting a territory near would expand my dip range into, which means expanding my commerce economy into. Getting access to import routes and export routes with the Western Med would, number one, give me much more access to uh, resources to import in my own territory. So far, my import economy is pretty lackluster with some minor trading with the, uh, the Moroccans and some trading in Africa, but I don't really have a lot of import um, options right now, with most of these tribes just not having the surpluses to support it, as I talked about last time. 
the Western Mediterranean nations with their more densely packed smaller territories will generally have more uh, surplus resources that I could access for import purposes. So that's one advantage. But also um, getting access to new distant people I can export to uh, sort of frees me up to be more aggressive in West Africa. I can uh, get more AE in this area and people who won't trade with me here, I can then sell to the Europeans and the North Africans who don't know about my tyranny. And I can also conquer more people over here and not miss out on possible export partners. So the commerce economy in general is just improved from both directions, import and export, by having these um, Mediterranean trade routes enabled. So the, the long and short of it is getting Sigil Massa is an extremely strategically important next step for the Republic. But how do we do that? Well, establish a claim is the best objective to go for to get that claim on Sigil Massa. I can then do a death march through the Sahara that's going to be miserable to get up here and siege it down and get it. Should be pretty straightforward. But first, we have to get our way through the enigmatic secure a drawer objective. Now, I uh, mentioned last time that this was a little hard to make sense of. At the time, I think I noted, and if I didn't note it, then I'll note it now. This objective has one of three things going on. Either the title is wrong and it's actually about securing Sigil Massa, which wouldn't make sense because this is the opening to then get a claim on Sigil Massa, but that would be consistent with the label of the, um, the condition, which is to have all of the province of Sigil Massa owned by us. So either the title is wrong or the display of the condition is wrong and it's actually the title is secure a drawer and the objective is to secure a drawer and it's just displaying the wrong tooltip or the tooltip is right and the objective is essentially wrong in that it's like the incorrect objective or the incorrect condition for the objective and it actually is to go to sigil massa which would make this like a, a mistake in the in the mod which is certainly possible now i uh actually because i have modding experience i opened up the classical rework mod and actually just looked at the code to try to figure this out because i couldn't <laughs> figure out what might be going on here and I'm not, I'm still not 100% sure, but I think it's essentially the second thing, that it's a tooltip problem. That the condition being displayed is mislabeled, basically, and that this, in the code, appears to look at whether the Adrar province, the parts that are uh, occupied, um, or that are, are owned by a, a nation, are uh, pl a plurality owned by you. That I think that's what's going on in the code. Now, I'm I'm not very experienced at mission coding, so I may be misreading what's in the code, but basically I think what's going on is that the title secure a drawer is correct, and the condition that's displayed is displayed wrong, but the condition is actually to have majority of a drawer under our control, and then this considers the objective completable. I think that's what's going on. I may, I may be, again, I may be misreading what's in the code, but reading the code, that appears to be what it's displaying, though I guess we're gonna find out in this video exactly what's going on, as my objective now is actually to secure a drawer anyways. So the long and short of all this is that getting a drawer under our control, even potentially just the majority of it by taking over uh, Chingueti, may complete this objective, which may, which would then give us uh, the establish a claim objective to be uh, started. It's a year to do this, which would of course be the, the big goal. So that's kind of what's going on with the missions right now. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, if the mission here is glitched, I may possibly fix it in the code. I, I don't feel super confident on mission coding, but we'll see if that ends up needing to be contemplated. If I have to spend this episode not really doing anything through the missions, because I have to wait to then have a chance to fix it between episodes, that, that's fine. I can just focus on another economic episode, or I can you know make use of some claims to do a little bit of warring. But whatever ends up happening, we're going to be getting our claim on Sigil Massa uh, through this objective being completed either as it currently is and it's just displaying the tooltip wrong or once I fix it in the code if that does need to happen then we'll do that at that point but either way um, any time that I'm like modding the mod during the campaign I'm going to give it a lot of explanation like what I'm doing here so you all know what's going on never want to do any mod modding kind of behind the scenes and not talk about it because it would just confuse everybody so just for transparency purposes if I need to mod the mod to fix this so that it works and I would do that, by the way, not because it would make my game easier. I'm, I'm actively trying to play a campaign that's as hard as possible, but because it would be literally impossible to actually get a claim on Sigil Massa in any other way other than through this mission, as this te territory can't be targeted for a claim fabrication. 
I guess technically a if if I could get a um, either a region of Sahara Occidentalis or maybe a region of Mauritania with one of the neighboring provinces being targeted as an objective, I could then get a claim on it through the mission, but that's very unreliable, and it may be possible that the that the Sahara Occidentalis region can't be used by the generic missions to create that kind of generic uh, region conquest mission, because most of this region doesn't really have normal territories in it, so <laughs> I think this custom mission is the only way, because again, these, these added tiles by the mod work differently than normal tiles, they have special properties, so I think expand into Sigil Masa is the only way to actually get to Sigil Masa at all, completely critical for this campaign's future. So I think it's worth it to do a little bit of mod modding if necessary. Hopefully, I don't need to. Again, I'm, I'm hopeful that this tooltip is just wrong, and I think based on my review of the code, that is what's going on, but we're going to find out in this episode. So that is enough yapping about that. Let's talk about our new icon, the Bugler, and what exactly is going on in the government. Now, we are in the year of Tokoroma and Jururu. Uh, Tokoroma, of course, is Tokoroma, Sankara, the Bugler. 7643 on the stats, joined by his co Arakan Jururu, Chilabele, the Democrat from the first episode with his uh, comical low Democrat conviction, but he's still a Democrat uh, character because of how the campaign begins when you're playing as a uh, Republic type nation. Now we'll look at him in a moment, but first, in terms of the different, we'll look at both of them in a moment actually, but in terms of the stats, seven Marshal coming from Jururu uh, is going to be providing plus 7% manpower recovery speed and plus 7% army morale recovery. Then six finesse coming once again from Jururu, that's minus 6% build cost and plus 12% national commerce income, very nice. Four charisma, and this is coming from Jururu as well, it's going to be providing plus 0.80 claim fabrication speed and minus 0.04 monthly tyranny quite a big downgrade from what we had before and in fact as you can see our tyranny loss has plummeted from i think it was at a high of about negative 0.25 it's now down to negative 0 0.8 0 0.08 not particularly impressive and uh, we do still have quite a bit of tyranny we, we are down from the kind of 40 ish tyranny we had uh, in the highs of the shield uh, but we're not quite i was hoping to get below 30 but um obviously you know playing as a Republic style nation, uh, things keep happening that cause me to gain tyranny. Uh, <laughs> it's just really hard to lose. But either way, um, we finally have the seven zeal coming from uh, Jururu, uh, which is displayed correctly here. Um, and uh, actually, I think I may have been saying Jururu earlier, but these are these three first sets are coming from Takoma. Sorry, I was reading from the, the the description, which of course is wrong. So. Uh, incidentally, the place in the UI that the stats appear is correct. So the stats that come from the main Otacon are going to appear on the left, coming from the co Otacon appear on the right. So my apologies for the misinformation there. But Jururu Jeru is providing his 7 zeal, that is correct. Minus 0.07 monthly war exhaustion and plus 0.07 monthly stab change. Again, as I commented last time, this duo is not the most impressive I've seen, but we do have a bit of Marshall to work with if we want to go to war. We will be going to war in this episode against the tribes and possibly against some other targets, but we'll see if that ends up uh, going anywhere, possibly not. We'll look at the uh, the next expected outcomes later, as I don't want to worry about that too much here in the opening. Now, in terms of where the parties are at, we have a Democrat ascen ascension with 45 support. Uh, this is probably why our Senate support is now so low. The furious Democrats are now very much uh, in the plurality of the nation. Uh, this is helped by Jururu being the co otacon so he is obviously providing a lot of his uh, Senate influence to the party. Patsaragombe Bolsa is, of course, a Democrat at this stage, and he is... Um, actually, yeah, that's, that's interesting that he's a Democrat now. Let me, um, let me take a look at him for a second here. Interesting. Okay, so he was previously a traditionalist, but he is now actually switched to become a Democrat. He was a trad. I think it was, yeah, it was the co Otacon a couple of episodes ago, the episode before the shield. Um, so for some reason, yeah, he was previously very high on both of these, and he was he was declaring as a trad, but he basically switched. Maybe because the new co Otacon is a Democrat, so he wants to uh, support them. Though the current Otacon is a trad. So either way, Pathabagombe has... Uh, oddly switched to being a uh, Democrat, and he's brought his giant Senate influence to them, so that uh, explains a bit why they're now more powerful than before. Fadiga Isawagen is a, a Democrat as well. I don't recall if he was a Democrat previously. He may have been, but he, he is a, a family head as well. So 
And we also have Sigiri Suwari, who's not a family head, but is a very influential character, so he's providing some influence as well uh, with that. Now, with all this Democrat control, uh, we may need to um, consider engaging in the agendas here, which we'll get to in a moment. But I may be able to do something funny with the fact that the oligarchs and the Democrats want opposite things. Oligarchs want me to bestow holdings, and Democrats want me to confiscate holdings, and I may be able to do some math in a moment here to see if I can get a net gain of approval from both of them. With the Democrats having more control, I may need to revoke some holdings in order to get uh, their approval up, and the oligarchs have plenty of room to lose approval. Now, I will actually go ahead and sw swap out all of the family characters to just start over from scratch. Uh, I'm going to try to do a better job at paying attention to um, statesmanship, as that is going to matter more typically than what the total possible... Uh, uh, attribute could be just so I min max my government here. We also are looking quite good on research. We had a very, um, a very peaceful, prosperous episode last time, so we do have a, a nice research base to work with. So that's quite nice as well. Let me go ahead and uh, drop all of these characters and start from scratch, just to uh, make sure I'm being efficient. Whatever in the offices, who is nearly mad? Okay, you're mad. Also, I don't think I need to uh, revoke free hands when they're not in office, because they should lose it when they're not in office anyways, so shouldn't be a shouldn't be a problem. Let's just fire everybody. And also let's take a look at the governor situation, because one of my characters, I think the, the main Atacon, he was the governor of, of Songhei. Let me review my governor situation. Okay, so Sahara Occidentalis is under a Suwadi character. She remains pretty good for her um, with her finesse. Uh, Actually, no, he was, it was the Jene governor, not the Songhei governor. I almost would kind of prefer her to be the Jene governor because her good finesse would be better there. And um, her marshal could be of use with the small, but, you know, not insignificant Jene levy. Of course, the other two regions don't have levies yet. With no... I think I'll just leave her there for now. Um, let me remind myself. Uh, any governor effects? The fort defense reduction. Not great out here, but it's okay. Probably leave her there for now, unless I have a reason to move her that comes up. So, as for Song Hei, we've got Gumasita Sankata, so we have a Sankata character in Song Hei. Okay, 10, 10 finesse is obviously pretty good to be a governor um, in Song Hei, and Song Hei is uh, largely under control thanks to his uh, finesse. So, that is good to leave there. Okay, um, so as for Jenny, well, first, let me let me review the family situation here. So at this point, only the Sankatas and the Suwadis have characters that are, or are uh, families that are content. How do the parties feel? Democrats like this arrangement. Oligarchs, I assume, yeah, they dislike it. If I can possibly keep, oh, you know what? Because we have a co outcome who's a Democrat, now might be a good episode to actually rebuild that Democrat approval. I've been dancing around with furious Democrats for such a long time. At, at this point, I think it's time to try to really boost things up here. So. With this much family scorn, they're actually going to trend up at a nice rate, so that is quite quite a good discovery for me. We do have Civil War problems, I will get to this in a moment. Uh, I have a lot to deal with here, obviously. So, with that noted, let me start with the Gene assignment. This is a very important region to assign. And, let's see. I could try to stick with just the two families that I have uh, who are not, who, who have uh, positions already. So, of course, those families being the uh, Sankara and Suwari families. So let's see if I can stick with just those two families uh, for now. So I could bring in uh, 10 finesse and 4 martial body Sankara. That would be a pretty good pick for the finesse side of things. That would help with Jene's uh, happiness and whatnot, and uh, economic potential. It does have a little bit of a little bit of income though at the moment. It is it's worse because there's no governor. Probably want to go with him. I think having a, a four martial leader for Gen A is fine. I don't need a high martial governor that badly right now. So let me bring in Abadi Sankata. If there's any reason to not. I think this is fine. Let's bring him in. He's also pretty loyal because he's weak-willed. Okay. 87 loyalty. That's still pretty good. That's looking fine. Okay, so Sankatas are now grateful, so that's going to upset the Democrats, I guess. So yeah, that's uh, Yeah, they, they hate grateful families so much. <laughs> Okay, so I guess with this in mind, do I make both families grateful, or do I try to keep just the Sankatas in power? Let me, let me see what I can do with just the Sankatas. Alright, so of course we have super good Sankata. Let's make her the oratory character. Um, actually, there's a number of them. 
characters here. All right, let's bring her in. Um, Marshall. Let's see. These are both good options here. Mine on you. Civic. I, I could make the Suwadis grateful as well, but then the Democrats would be furious about that, so I need to just try to keep it with the Sankatas if possible. There's no good options for a researcher unless I go with the Suwadis. Let me see how it looks with the Suwadi coming in, how the Democrats feel about this. It's, it's going to be tight, but I, I can gain Democrat approval um, in a minute with some political shenanigans. So I think for the sake of my republic, I need to I need to um, have a, a duopoly situation with the family. Sankatas and Suwadis are uh, in charge. And by the way, it's not lost on me that it's very funny that because of the way that the Democrat approval works in Vanilla Imperial to Rome, you're actually incentivized to stack your government with one family only, which is the opposite outcome that the Democrats would want because of how Democrats evaluate grateful families and content families. It's basically better for Democrat approval management to have a oligarchy in effect than to actually have a meritocratic um, government. So it's uh, definitely not lost on me that that's the effect of how this works mechanically. All right, let's bring in Labadeado Suwadi with his uh, Tenzil. All right, very good. Now, as for the offices, let's just get as best as we can here. I'm going to have to... Uh, Gonna have to make some compromises, but here comes Kaba Suwadi. Family Hades gonna be happy about that. That's gonna definitely help. Is this going to impact the Dems? No. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go for Omen Pasha. National tax is more important. Um, Kenga Sankata, bring her in. She's extremely, extremely loyal as well, so that's great. Augur should be. Oh, I would love an Augur with that kind of that kind of zeal. Nine will have to do, unfortunately, but we gotta gotta keep the Democrats from going into open rebellion here. Again, I could be, I could allow for some less scorn families. Um, even just one less scorn family could give me a really good character to work with. But I have to make constant <laughs> crippling compromises with these Democrats. They're so, I mean, the the real problem is the tyranny again, and really this is like what I need to spend a lot of time fixing up. Is they are so mad about the tyranny, and I have to. I have to dance around on the sharpest of knife's edges because of how tyrannical my government is um, in order to keep the Democrats from having uh, approval loss. Okay, um, let's do Magistrate. Let's bring in... You're pretty good. You have a little bit of statesmanship. Don't have a lot of other options, so come on in. All right, Tribute of the Soldiers. Let's do... We have got a Moko. I could bring him in. He's very difficult to deal with because he has, <laughs> this guy has three negative loyalty traits, not great, but I may not have a lot of options here. Let's bring him in. Uh, does he have free hands? He does currently have free hands, right? That'll have to do. Tribune of the people, let's bring in Kundalan Sabadi, high priest. At this point, just, let's see, Baki Sabadi is fine, physician. Oh, yes, somebody will have to do. Okay. And now, let's uh, ensure everyone who would benefit from free hands has them for maximum PI gain. We're not looking too good, but we will be able to do scheme influence in just a moment. This guy incredibly has free hands already. Ugh. Um, if I could bribe him, that'd be nice to get some additional loyalty. Kenga is already super, super loyal. Uh, she's grateful, content family, great to the office, lots of things yeah, she's happy about. It. Um... All right, you. Democrats will like that free hands. Okay. And now, over with you. Scheme influence, 1.82. Not the best, but we're really having to make some compromises here. Okay, so at this stage, um, that boosted my Democrat approval slightly, though the trads are a bit less happy. I've actually lost Senate support overall. But we're gonna do some shenanigans now to try to address this. Also, let me just make sure this is all looking fine. Yeah, okay. Um, so Democrats are trending up very slightly. <sighs> Perhaps getting a at least one family who's not sworn would help with the oligarch management, as I do think I can get Democrat. Well, let me first see. So revoking. 
let's see, revoke from heads of families, which is important to note. So let me go over to family head situation. Who's like super loyal and who whose opinion doesn't, uh, is not a, a concern here. So you're actually disloyal right now. In fact, we do still have civil war problems. My co autocon is actually disloyal. What's the problem? He's just mad that the Democrats are mad. Okay, and he has a lot of power base. Rejected law, he's still mad about that. Um, doing this is probably a good idea. Well, eh, corruption on the co autocon. Let me remind myself here. So popularity is averaged, but corruption I don't think is, I think corruption is based on just the corruption of the main autocon. So Jeru's corruption shouldn't affect the nation. I'm not going to give him a holding because the Democrats won't like that. Yeah, let me give him free hands. Democrats are going to like this, um, and it's going to improve his loyalty. Okay. Didn't really help the support overall, but it's uh, not the worst uh, direction for this. Go into Rats or Matt, obviously. Okay. Um, having done that, we now have fixed the Civil War situation, which is good to address. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me... This is actually... Oh, this has already been, been adjusted for. Okay. Um, I could increase wages to manage corruption. Yeah, let, me, let me see, actually. Do I have corruption problems appearing yet? Everyone at 20 is, is set there. Um, you're 10, you've gained corruption from various things. He actually still has free hands, even though he's not an officer. I thought losing... Um, the job removed their free hands. I guess it sometimes happens, but sometimes it doesn't. Right, this is fine so far. Let's leave it as it is. I could also reduce wages, but that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> that's gonna make things a bit too unmanageable. Let's go for the jackal. Which means 13.52, that's very good. Okay go back to the family head review situation. Um, so this guy here is uh, now he's not disloyal. But if I removed his... Actually, let me let me first see how this works. So revoke holding it does lose his loyalty by five. Um, Democrats like a confiscation of land from a head fam from family head and oligarchs dislike it. I have plenty of oligarch approval I can lose. Now, this action in theory should gain me Senate support because the Democrats have over double the current control of the oligarchs, and gaining approval with them should therefore be about as double as important as losing approval with the oligarchs. So this action should gain me, I think, 2.50, around 2.50 of Senate support overall. I may be completely wrong, but let's discover together if I'm right or not. Okay, I didn't gain as much as I thought, but I did gain approval or support, which is good overall to gain. As, of course, I'll be gaining passive approval with the oligarchs more than I'll be gaining passive approval with the Democrats. Well, that's not true right now, but I will gain approval with the oligarchs from doing tyrannical action, so not to worry about that. Okay, um, let's keep this energy going so I can get the uh, the 10 approval from confiscation. Because, again, my all of this, all of this internal management, the entire point of it all is to not gain tyranny. That's everything I'm doing right now is about trying to prevent myself from gaining tyranny by doing diplomatic actions. So just to be clear, that is the the recurring you know core point of all this. All right, let's go over to maybe Patagombe. No, well, Democrats. Okay, yeah, they should, even though he is a Democrat, they should still like this. They did like that good. Okay. He also has enough uh, opinion. I can do it again with him. I could even do it one more time with him without any problems. In fact, he has no more holdings anyways. Okay. And then... Let's see. You're, you're an officer. You're me. I can't do it with myself. You're not an officer. Do you have holdings? He does have... I can, he has enough loyalty. I can revoke a holding with you. First, let me let me double check the UI. Um, Abunu, holding. Wait, I, I literally didn't look as I was saying I should look. Okay, Democrats like this. Okay, that should be the five, which means the Democrats should be happy 
in some time in the future. I mean, last episode, the Democrats lied to me about what their objective was, so who knows <laughs> if they're going to be happy or not. It's very mysterious. But it, it, incidentally, I, I didn't even mention this earlier, the trads are in control, which means omen power boost, and we do have um, very high trad approval gain because the Otacon is a trad. We're at peace. We have a mono-religion pantheon right now. Um, and uh, they like our, um, they're getting also the uh, the approval from our sensor. So just wanted to quickly note that. Okay, <laughs> having done all of that, um, we do have Assembly of Citizens going for that further tyranny loss. I, I could switch it to Assembly of Residents, which the Democrats would like for corruption loss, or switch it back to abolish assemblies. I think I'm going to leave it as it is. <clears throat> we do have the... Um, or is it? Uh, yeah, here it is. The Curate Assembly. So we can do this every ten years. I could do it now and start the ten year the ten year cooldown while I have this law to happen every increment of five, so seventy five, eighty five, and so on. I could also wait five years. This allows us to boost our governors, which could be good, but I don't exactly know what to expect from this. This could also give us a chance for some approval management with the other factions. So maybe a good idea to give this a go. Um. Let me give this a try. Summon Curate Assembly summons some of our most prestigious uh, patricians to legitimize the appointment of the Assembly. This interaction can boost the capabilities of our appointed governors and can only be used once every 10 years. Curate Assembly. In the relative comfort of the city walls, the favorite citizens of Timbuktu gather to cast their votes of approval or disapproval upon our appointed magistrates. On this occasion, two candidates have been presented to the Assembly, seeking endorsement and assistance in their role. Bade Sankara, an even-handed soul who possesses the hearts of the subjects, and Kili Kilia Suwari, a cunning yet cautious leader of men, both sit patiently awaiting the inevitable approval of the patricians. This is my Governor of Jene and Governor of Sahara Occidentalis, respectively. Okay, so... Okay, so it's based on the finesse and the corruption of the ruler. Okay, interesting. Um, so I could let the assembly decide democratically, which will randomly pick one or the other to, looks like, boost one of the stats. Or I could lean the assembly in one direction, and I'd lose loyalty, and I'd, oh, I'd spend PI. I think I'm just going to let the assembly decide. I don't really want to spend PI right now. I don't want to lose loyalty on either of these governors. We trust the assembly to pick. I, I want them to pick body because Jene is a more important region than Sahara Occidentalis from a governor stat perspective. We trust the assembly to pick wisely. Assembly declines endorsement. The curate assembly deliberates well into the hot afternoon with dour faces and disapproving stares. Finally, the speaker stands and delivers a scathing rebuke of our candidates. There will be no endorsement this year. Oh boy. Wow. Five stability for that. I don't know if I'm ever, I'm ever going to do this again if I'm, I have a chance of losing five stability. Um, I could also... So between these options, I would rather spend 20, 29 gold than lose 20 loyalty for five years with Kilia. She's pretty loyal, but I don't want any funny business with my Sahara governor. So, yeah, five stability for this is a little absurd. But at least I know what it does now. <laughs> Maybe I won't be selecting this too often. I'll have to make it up to Kilia. That's a shame. <sighs> Alright. Um, incidentally, we can do Divine Sacrifice. Um, actually, no. Can we? Hold on. Just kidding. We can't do Divine Sacrifice. I was about to say we have a lot of stability gain for being at 54, but because we have Divine Sacrifice going until 78. Okay. Having said all that, I think at this point we're just waiting to get a claim on Igil from our Fabricate, which we'll get going. We'll uh, start with in a moment. Aside from that, let's see. 5 and 9... Just one last quick check. Democrats are trending up slightly. Oligarchs are trending down quite a bit. I should probably balance this a little bit, but again, oligarchs... I think oligarchs will like it when I declare war. I think the Democrats might dislike... Actually, the trads dislike it when I declare war. But uh, I think we're going to leave everything else as it is. This all looks fine. Um, and even if... Again, even if I'm not being super efficient with statesmanship because I have to pick characters in such a weird way... I am building statesmanship on a lot of different characters, so I at least have a good set of people to work with uh, for future cycles, so that'll have to do. Okay. 
I do think it's very weird and frustrating that in a republic, I can't be as meritocratic as in like a kingdom. Because in a kingdom, you can just pick whoever you want and you know focus on the great families or not. Um, you can pick people based on their skill. In a republic, the factions have such extreme reactions to the family situations that you have to bend over backwards to focus on family management, which then affects how the factions feel which limits your ability to be meritocratic. Perhaps a sly and accurate criticism of how democracies and republics are often not meritocratic, but are rather based on factionalism. I think that's a real concern in modern day democracies at least, but nonetheless, that is a part of the Timbuktu situation in this campaign. We're now at 42 support, which is definitely better than it was. I could push it up further with some, um, with some slander. Could slander the oligarchs, uh, which might not be the worst idea. Let's see, what are we looking at? Two tyranny, though, is a lot to ask. And I don't think I'd consistently gain enough support for it to be worth it. I think we just wait for this to trend up, as we do have upward trend with the two larger factions. And the downward trend with the oligarchs is not cataclysmic. I guess I could bestow holdings, but then the... Uh, you know what, I'm going to gain 10 approval in a couple of uh, ticks from the Democrats, or whenever they decide to do it. It's very random when they decide to do it. I think we're good to go now. Um, let, me, let me first check, actually. You set this on a civ effort. I would like to change this over to... Uh, 78's probably fine for conversion. I think I need... Let me see, actually. Yeah, we need, we need more conversion here. Switch this back to conversion. I think it's necessary. Yeah, it's, I think it is necessary. Okay. Yeah, it's mostly Sigawick. Not gonna fly. Over here. Conversion still. Alright. Let's go ahead on speed 3. And, uh, get to it. I really would like to go to ignore garrisons, but fort maintenance is not that bad. I think I just need to, uh, bear with it for now. <clears throat> so while we're waiting around, we've got Tuskia, Big Lydia, nothing else too crazy going on. Or here's the aims of Democrats, that's what, what I was waiting for. Aims of Democrats realized partisans of the Democrats are practically falling over each other to congratulate Atacon Takotama for defending their interests in the assembly of Timbuktu. Pandering to the desires of the common people has increased the support we can expect from them for the time being. All right, that helped us in the support side a little bit. Not, still not above that 51 threshold, but um, we're closer now, so that's good. We're getting our Chinguetti claim now. We have to wait for 20 PI to get the claim on Igil, but that will have to wait. Our Democrats are very happy now, very good. All right, we are trending up, so that's good. <laughs> trending up on Senate support very slowly, but we are trending up. I guess, what do the tr what do the trads want? So they want religious complexes in Kura, and I do have a, a spare investment uh, available if I wanted to do that in Kura. Now, let me just verify exactly what they want, religious complexes. So Kura is not the best location for this because it's only likely to have one city in uh, Houndu. But I could do this for the, I mean, the bonus, you know, isn't bad. And it would give me 10 approval with the trads. So may as well do this. I mean, it's free. So, because I guess the question would be, is this free investment better served in Timbuktu? The city building slots up here would actually be valuable, be very valuable. Um, I have, of course, full uh, building slot usage in my three cities up here. The import route will eventually be good once I have access to more imports. Um, pop capacity is always good, and in this area where there may be some pop capacity concerns with the harsh climate, could be good as well. Fort infrastructure here is not a very serious concern, so I don't think that's a huge deal. I think getting 10 approval with the trads ahead of any war declarations to reduce tyranny gain will be important. So I think I will go ahead and, for political reasons, do religious endowments in Kura, as the trads want. Yes. Okay, very uh, weird place to direct it, but we'll do a religious endowments in Kura. Eventually, the city of Houndu, which is on a farmland on river, will be a pretty good city location, and it will be a bit better with that bonus in effect. This may take the full year to sort of trigger, so it is what it is. 
All right. Very good. We will be getting to advances in about eight months or so, so that's also quite nice. Too much tyranny with the amount of support that I do have, but any political issues that come up before that will be uh, annoying to uh, deal with. I'm gonna save my money for now. Nearly there. Let's check and see really quick. Um, could I? I should probably switch to. I justify cultural assimilation in Kuda. I think acquisition of wealth is better there for now. It's pretty high. The Afnu should be there. Mema, I don't have a lot of territory in. I should switch it to assimilation, though. Once I have spare PI, which I will likely never have <laughs> spare PI very soon. Tichit's almost ready to get off of harsh treatment, which is actually pretty crazy. But I think keeping Tichit on harsh treatment for now isn't the worst idea. I also don't want to spend the PI or the Tyranny to switch it. Kulima should definitely be on Assimilation, though it's not a very large province yet, so we'll hold off for now. Alright, one more month. We'll be able to get a claim going on Igil. And I should actually get my army raised and sent over, because it's going to take them a while to get over here to go for uh, Chingueti. This place is desert, so that's attrition, and then there's probably more attrition over here too, yeah. 13 supply limit only, and it's pretty bad. So we're gonna have a lot of attrition problems, even being in our own territory, or next to our own territory. So I need to start marching my way north uh, fairly soon here. Um, perhaps near the end of the year, I'll get my army raised and sent off to war. Right, there's my claim fabrication on Igil. Now, if these guys actually form an alliance in the next uh, little bit, I'll be annoyed because I'll have wasted 20 PI, but they haven't done it yet, and if they were going to, they would have by now. It's, you know, it's been 25 years, so maybe they won't. Um, I think I'll w give it... Yeah, you know, I'll give it a bit longer. I don't need to... I'm not going to take a year to get over here. It'll be probably maybe two or three months, so give it a bit longer with my army not raised. That's more money for me. All right. And if uh, the mission works, as I think it does, I'll then get the claim, <clears throat> or I'll then get the objective finished. I can spend a year getting the claim on Sigil Masa after that. Let's wait for maybe November to raise up the forces and uh, send them off. Cults sanctioned. Our financial encouragement of the local cults in the province of Kura has led to the renovation of old shrines and construction of new. All right. Democrats should like that, even though this was a little bit of a... Uh, head-scratching decision uh, in the short term. Aims of the trads realized. There we go. Partisans of the traditionalists are practically falling over each other to congratulate Arakan Tokotomo for defending their interests in the assembly of Timbuktu. Ensuring the concerns of the conservatives were addressed will help to win their support in future disputes. Power is for helping your friends. All right. We're nearly at 51. We are now in the green zone for uh, diplomatic actions without any serious tyranny gain. That's quite good. We also got our first advance, oratory advance, well, our first advance of this set. Uh, this is going to be country level plus 0.50%. Very nice. We get the next couple in the uh, the next couple of months, it looks like. Okay, so I think I'm going to come on over here and get to Town Criers. Again, I, I probably should have done this, this set before first, but getting the output bonuses over here has helped my research improve. So... And the pop promotion speed is quite nice. So these are both good first options, um, but most of the time I go for Town Criers first. For some reason I went for Hyper Cost first this previous time. It is what it is. Um, let's start with Humane Conduct for the extra dip rep. The concepts of Battlefield Honor has existed for millennia. 
Nonetheless, we should set down a code for dealing with our opponents that we ourselves might receive a fair treatment in defeat. All right, one dip rep. This is a truly vanilla style tech. In my uh, hegemony mod, my techs are so much stronger than this. It's always really funny to see these really weak techs uh, in the vanilla tech tree. That's why I made my own custom tech tree for my mod. But um, anyways, okay, that's gonna improve our dip rep a little bit. Manpower is approaching the max, so this is a good time to go to war. Gain some tyranny somehow, I don't know how this happened, but as usual, tyranny is very hard to lose. <sighs> okay. We're still trending up, even with the tyranny, that's good. Yeah, Democrats are now stuck because of my tyranny gain that I got there. The oligarchs are a little less unhappy. The trads moving up is what's really causing us to gain support here. All right, let's go ahead and raise our forces and get ready for war here. Let's uh, turn on our maintenance. Raise the forces in uh, Colima. This should be fine. It is only, I guess the problem is we, we aren't gonna be able to do any assaulting with this force. We may wanna raise the Gene force too. In fact, I think I will. And this doesn't take over, that's good. Let's just both have them come up to Wadan and hopefully not die of attrition on the way there. A petitioner approaches a senior citizen by the name of Bonnie Debo is a random Democrat, approached our Otacon in private this morning. In a hushed voice, he spoke of a vision of the near future in which he was found by his loved ones having been killed under mysterious circumstances. With shaking hands, he offered all his worldly goods to the state in return for our protection. Okay, um, we could gain 43 gold and loyalty with this guy, but the loyalty doesn't matter at all. The stability could be quite nice, although with our current high stability trend, three stability is not actually quite as strong as it may be in some circumstances. I think at this point, the gold might be a little nicer, although three stability and 43 gold are both pretty competitive with each other. Let me go for the gold here because I feel pretty comfortable with my current stability trend. We're not gonna have enough, well, the issue is we're not gonna have enough PI to get divine sacrifices again in time, right? I think we have divine sacrifices until 78, yeah. Not feeling too confident we're going to be able to do Divine Sacrifices again on schedule, but three stability won't make a huge... I guess the research points will be quite nice. Uh, because I want to uh, start um, shifting away from selling nobles, because that's the main source of my tyranny, I'm going to go for the gold here. We're going to have a bit less uh, conquest gold in our future here, so how awful we shall take good care of him. All right. Not too much I can use the gold for at the moment, but I do have it ready to go in case I find a use for it. I'm sure I will find something to use this gold for. <laughs> Ooh, hold on. We have a colonization option here. What's this? Coming from Kaga. From I think it's from Kaga. Yeah, it's from Kaga. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, I think I would rather colonize Kura first. Ten gold for that. I'll go for that. Very nice. And this is, let's see here. This is not Bozo population. This is Bobo population. Okay. And religiously, what are we looking at? Okay, it is Bidaic. That's fine. That's quite nice. Uh, I think it's because we had 14 population there. Let's see if uh, we can get some more, more colonization options popping up here. But uh, I haven't been too focused on that so far. This is really going to take a... Maybe I was, a, I was perhaps a, a overestimating the speed of these armies. This may take a little bit longer than I was expecting. But we will get there eventually, and I guess we'll be attacking both of these guys. Okay, um, we have the martial and civic advances at about the same time. Morale of armies and navies, plus 0.07, and extra legion and navy maintenance cost, plus 2.50% for both. And 1% increased pop capacity and 1% increased global monthly food modifier. All right, which means we're now going to grab a centralized committees for change gov er, 
Just kidding, we're gonna grab official orders for a, a minus 0.01 month of tyranny. Employing skilled speakers to proclaim our decrees, laws, and decisions will lessen the chance of fermenting dissent in our populace. So that we can then immediately grab town criers. Plus 10% monthly PI, minus 25% smear rep cost, and increases the chance of trials by 10%. Employing skilled orders on our behalf will allow us to anonymously spread the truth about those wicked enough to act against our interests. This also, by the way, gets us closer to coding, which I may actually prioritize over centralized committees, which you've probably never seen anyone say, but uh, dip range is the name of the game in this campaign. In fact, there's a lot of good stuff around here in general. Census data is also really, really good for the extra freemen we get and the free promise investment. Yeah, there's some really good stuff around here. Control range uh, boost as well. End monthly tyranny reduction and dip range down here. Holy moly. I am loving it. All right, the <laughs> slowest invasion in the world is on its way over. <laughs> here they come. Very, very gradually. But they will get there eventually. <sighs> All right. Okay, things are looking... We're at 51 now. That's good to get get that ahead of the uh ahead of the um the war declaration so we should now we're also trending up as well so we're not going to have any tyranny problems but yeah the arrival of our armies is going to end up taking about half a year just to travel across this desert i won't be able to road very much of it either which will mean travel by land through the desert is not going to be a very efficient thing to do really what i really want in the future is to colonize the canary islands this is a crazy jumping off point to get into the Western Med in terms of conquest, but any sort of expansion into the Western Med or into the Atlantic areas will be a, a distant prospect, as we'll need to have coastal territory and possibly that, that won't even be enough. I may need to have territory over here first to get control range out here. We shall see. It's, a, it's an interesting question to figure out, but nonetheless, in come our armies. Again, seven, seven marshal isn't really what I consider, like, you know, top tier commander quality but against these little goofy tribes with no armies this should be fine not anticipating any serious problems speaking of serious problems incompetent storage distraught officials in the province of colima are reporting that a not insubstantial portion of the province's grain reserves have been allowed to fester and rot away due to the ineffably incompetent practices used to store them the local people are in uproar at their toil being wasted so frivolously and worry about having to go hungry. All look to us for justice in this scarcely unbelievable scandal. All right, so Kalima is um, this province over here, which has uh, no loyalty problems at all, which means I probably just go ahead and let them lose. I, I could pay money, so 20 gold is not that big of a deal. That's kind of... Um Getting a food debuff for 10 years in Kulima is probably fine. But is is it worth... Like, 20 gold's not that much, but is, is the food debuff up here even less of a big deal? I think probably it's fine. Um, I don't anticipate using Kulima as a food... Like, a couple episodes ago when I was invading the southernmost Sahadan tribes, Kulima was my food recovery-like location, so this actually would have been a strategic issue at the time. I think at this point we have Tichit and also the Wadon territories as food uh, recovery places for wars up in the desert. So let me just go ahead and say it is only some green. Sorry, Kalima, but uh, I think uh, you're gonna have to take take the uh, take the hit on that one. Are we gonna arrive in time for the Chingueti claims? That's gonna be convenient. I'm also gonna save my PI now and hope I can somehow get enough in time to do uh, Divine Sacrifice. We have a slightly lower stability than I prefer, but we shall see what we can uh, get up to there. All right, good, we're here in time. Hmm. Jean I live, you should get here as well. Plenty of time to spare. This is a uh, this is pretty grim. Having legions will eventually allow me to possibly station a legion in our our desert outpost to uh, ooh, have a trade route available in Timbuktu. From pops, it looks like. Can I reach anybody? Yes, but no one has surplus for me, so that is too bad. We will wait for someone to have surplus for me at this point. All right, we are going to get here in time. Very nice. Let's 
another 500 men who can, 500 uh, infantry who can potentially join in an assault. We shall see if that ends up being uh, being necessary. Probably not. Doing assaults up here. I guess I can re I can recover from my 99%. Oh, I can recover from my territory in the Wadan area, but I wouldn't really want to just waste manpower if needed. I've got plenty of manpower built up. It'd be nice to keep that going. But we'll see. <laughs> Don't know exactly what to expect here. All right. On this tick, we should be good for war. I think speed three is actually probably still fine. All right, claim on Chingueti is ready to go, and we declare. All right, here we go. We'll be taking Adrar, Nyara, our fugitory down here. We'll join in technically, now that they're gonna participate at all. Let's go for it. And by the time the siege is done, the Igil claim should be done as well, so that should be perfect. Come on in, here comes uh, Tokurma with his bugle, most likely uh, blowing, blowing hard on that thing. Pause. Uh, <laughs> but he's uh, leading the way with his, uh, with his trumpet. Here we come. <sighs> All right, should be no problem. We can always come back to Adon for more food. These guys are not even fully garrisoned. All right, we're definitely in the clear <laughs> on this one. <laughs> I could do an assault, but no need to mess around. If I do, well, no, I've got plenty of manpower, so I won't run out of infantry if I do an assault. But my experience fighting in the desert has been that any sort of risky assault decision making is a recipe for disaster. I don't want to have to somehow need to come back to my territory. Though with, again, the Wadon territory here, we should be okay. I'm just going to play it safe. No need to mess around here. These guys should be fairly easy to root out. And we have to wait for the Igil claim anyways. So if I am coming up against this finishing, I guess I could do an assault, but no need to get too risky here. Okay, now this is actually quite a big decision because I have three... I have three good and two really good options here. So the good one is legal patronage for the extra loyalty, though at the moment, not a huge deal. I got loyalty management under control. This would help my PI gain in my officers a little bit, but again, not really a huge deal. Centralized committees is going to be really good to get, so my governor policy micro is way cheaper. 20% reduction, that'll save me a lot of PI over time. Or, and also gets me closer to the very good census data and also uh, hierarchy responsibilities, or coding for the dip range. Now, I think coding is actually the best option right now because if we look at my dip range at the moment, I am reaching uh, the edges of Iberia and North Africa, but there are some very powerful nations just out of reach, and 15% increase could actually make a uh, make a difference here. So if we look here, so 50% from regional power, um, I think the way dip range typically works is that the percentage is modifying the sum and not the original base. I don't remember for sure, but from coding my mod, dip range seems to sort of uh, multiply on itself, essentially. So I think the 15% will actually be a noticeable increase to our dip range. So let me go ahead and select this and take a look and see how this affects things. Again, this is an unusual tech choice that I wouldn't normally make, except for in a campaign like this one. By making use of a pre-decided number of codes for quick communication, we can greatly alleviate the perils of long-distance communication with our emissaries and spies in foreign courts. All right, now let me go ahead and... Okay, we are now reaching uh, more of Iberia and more of North Africa. We can also reach a bit further this way now. And let me investigate if I can now reach anybody with surpluses. Let me maybe give it a tick and then we'll, we'll check that but we can now reach more people, which also means more people who can potentially reach, actually, I guess their dip range has to reach me for them to buy my goods, but either way I can buy their goods, which is uh, going to be quite nice for a commerce economy. Supply shortage, okay. Uh, assaulting would be nice to clean this up, but again, no huge risk. Let me wait until the Igil claim is closer to finishing, then I'll maybe do an assault. We will revisit the issue. Nope. I am reaching people in Iberia, though. Yeah, Iberian powers. There's a uh, Mastia there. No one has surpluses is the real problem. I need some people to get a bit more aggressive up here. Chelskia is like, you know, these guys probably have surpluses. Let's see. 
Maybe not, actually. Oh, they, they actually do. Okay. They are trading. If I can reach Tuskia, that might be the uh, the way. Also, what's happening here? Tertuna is actually an independent client of Tuskia. Interesting. Really, the real economic prize is the very distant eastern Mediterranean with these big empires. These guys will probably have... These guys are fighting about... Oh, ooh, we've got a big Egypt on Egypt fight going on here. Okay. I was wondering when this would happen. Egypt appears to be winning over Meadow, which is not a huge surprise. Meadow is much smaller. Although Meadow is way more powerful than me, for example, um, they are way less powerful than Egypt. So Egypt is likely to conquer their old Bronze Age holdings down here in the Upper Nile. Very interesting. We'll see if uh, they can expand that far down. And if so, I'm not acting... Well, uh, I, I can't see the distance in the dip range map, but let me try naval range. Actually, I have no naval range for reference, so never mind. I, I can't tell how far this direction... I'm not reaching Meadow, but I'm also not reaching these tribes. I guess getting more holdings in Songhai could expand my eastern dip range. If I could potentially reach all the way over here, that's another way to get there, but that's it's really, really far. <laughs> I don't think that's too feasible, but we'll see. Um, anyways, let's double-check again. Nope. Okay, how's the food situation looking? It's not that bad. Food consumption is pretty under control right now, so that's good. We got good Senate support right now. Very nice. Oh, we have a, a Dadian Civil War. That is not what I was expecting. Um, what on earth is... How... Okay, <laughs> we got Civil War next to us. Okay, so this is interesting. Not too much I can do to really capitalize on this. Um, these guys, actually, they're, they're next to Niata. They're not next to me, but they are. I guess Niata is one of my feud, or my only feudatory, so they are sort of next to me. Don't think I can do much about this, or can't do much to take advantage of that, but it is worth noting. Also, I think I think switching my Republic type might actually be a good idea in the future. Um, I need to have. Let's see. Well, let me let me first actually. Well, let me actually look at this while this is going, so I'm not, you know, water shortage. That's pretty good. Um. Actually, let me let me think. Let me look at this for a moment here. Um. Which of these would be best for me? Probably plutocratic republic is what's going to synchronize the best with my plans here. Um, trads would dislike this, which is kind of funny. I lose a lot of stability by switching. That's you know going to happen no matter what. Okay, so that would be two civic and one religious. Let me look ahead here. So two civic, I could do complex tariffs, and I mean, I'll get some of these later on. Yeah, pop capacity would be really good. Roots, yeah, I think I think of these things, Plutocratic Republic is the best option for my long-term economic plans because of the different idea bonuses. Um, this would also give me uh, one extra capital trade route, 10% commerce boost. What would oligarchy be? The wages of characters and is that citizen happiness? Okay, that's okay. Theocratic. The religion happiness would be good for the economy, and the omen power could indirectly help the economy. But then I'd be looking at two religious ideas, one oratory. Keeping an oratory slot for a corruption reduction could be quite good. Religiously speaking, religious ideas are sort of all over the place. Some of the okay, divine mandate's pretty good for tyranny management. More omen power, but that's actually quite late. Uh, I could also do divine sanction. This one is like the long-term goal: 200 territories. We're only at 52. I might eventually do this um, after I've deified rulers. The yeah, imperial cult is really powerful. This would basically let me be transform into an empire. Um, yeah, this is a monarchy-style government, so I'd abandon my republic. I might do this in the future. <laughs> the, the flavor text is really fun right now. Fear and denial that Dakotamas and Kana the Bugler is blessed. <laughs> bugler the blessed, alright. Um, I think Plutocratic Republic is a more reasonable transition for me because it leads into my economic strengths. Yeah, so this is going to require... We already have the stability. I mean, that is going to be... 40 stability is always what I want to be above. 
I need to have 60 territory level in Timbuktu the tile. I have to have lowered import tariff law. Let's see what this is going to require. So, first of all, Timbuktu the tile is already at 54. So, wow, we are um, we're nearly there, actually. And it's at its cap right now. So, honestly, maybe another building will get me the sim level I need or some other national modifier. We're, we're not that far away at all from Timbuktu having that bonus. Okay, uh, that's interesting. And then the lowered import uh, thing, where is that? Oh, here it is. Does this require... Oh, hold on. I need to have one port to do this. Okay, well, that's that's a bit of a pearl. Okay, so I just need to have a port to be able to do all the import stuff. Um, although I wouldn't keep lowered import tariffs after transitioning, I would definitely go for Institute Wealth Levy. Whew! My good golly G, 25% export value. That is a valuable uh, thing to go for. This would give me a pirate haven in my port, which is kind of funny, but um, the monetary benefit of, uh, of this is uh, it's crazy. Okay, <laughs> definitely want to get a port. So with that in mind, um, perhaps actually going towards the coastline isn't the worst idea, so I can then transition to being a um, <laughs> to, to being a, uh, a plutocratic republic. Um, but what's the easiest way to get there? Colonizing my way to the coastline over here is going to be very slow going. Definitely the better route is to get to it through territory that's owned, which would be through the Rugen area. I do have that mission ready to go to conquer into Jolof. I think I will go for that after I get my Sigilmasa territory. So that's the, the next couple episodes planned out right there to get to having a port for Plutocratic Republic. All right. Feeling happy about that. Ooh. I can now colonize this as well. Feeling happy about that plan. Very good. Nice. Okay. Good, good, good. At this point, let me wait for this siege timer to finish, then we'll do an assault at this point. This place has so much <laughs> defensiveness, it's crazy. Years of food supply is absurd for, for this modifier, but yeah, this sieges do take a long time in real history, so it's not not too hard to uh, to accept. Show me a breach. Food shortage is pretty good, but not a breach. All right, at this point, I just want to get this over with so I can go get to Igil. Let's do the assault. Again, we only have 2k uh, infantry to do the assault with, but this should be... I, I can't imagine this wouldn't succeed. But let's see, actually. <laughs> I've been surprised before in this campaign. Siege of Chinguetti. Let's do it. Okay, yeah, as, as expected, this was fine. Alright, so this place survives. To Kodma Sankana, the bugler led his men to glorious victory during the Siege of Chinguetti. The enemy fleeing in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war like that it causes us back into Timbuktu to admire to Kodma greatly, building such wealth lands will make a cause for the future. <laughs> Okay, uh, let the looting be gentle, please. No funny business. All right, what's my infantry damage? Oh, we barely lost anybody. I probably could have done this earlier, but now we'll have time to trudge our way up to Igil and go to war with them. All right, I think I just finished this war now, so war exhaustion does not become a problem. I'll be taking that. No AE from this one, okay. I <laughs> guess nobody cares about this little goober tribe out here. All right, I'll be taking that directly. Thank you. I, I could make them a tributary, and I guess I should give this I should give this some thought. I should uh, entertain the idea because 0.45 gold from this tile is cataclysmically more valuable than the actual value of the tile. The real value is in the long-term security of not sharing this area with a possible backstabber. Like I can't ultimately ever trust the AI in this game to not betray me at an opportune moment. I think the concern would not be that, you know, Chinguetti has a big army. Again, it comes down to can they, you know, betray me and then hire mercs and then throw me off in some way. I think just, and also, again, because I don't know if the mission will require me to own it directly or if a tributary counts as a vassal, which it may require alternatively. Let me just get the territory directly. Okay. My Arakan, the Numidian city-state of Chinguetti, accepts her generous peace offer. Chinguetti Adrar to Timbuktu. Okay, so... Uh, I'm not going to be imprisoning them. I have too much tyranny gain at this point. 
I don't need the money from selling off nobles, also. I think I could go for AE loss, or... Um, yeah, that's probably the best one to go for, honestly. I think killing them is not going to help with the local happiness too much. So, let me go ahead and banish those of class and put the rest of the sword. Alright. This is still not uh, triggering yet, so maybe once I get this... If it requires me to, no, I can't even occupy. I can't inhabit these other areas, so that wouldn't that wouldn't make sense. Okay. Twenty-first of February. Any trade for me? No. That's too bad. I will just uh, reorganize over the kick and uh, hopefully get some food back as well. I'll just assault Igil immediately. Okay, now do I keep this fort here? Is the question as well. I don't... I think this should be a salt mine. In fact, these should both be salt mines. Wadon is the best location for Fort... Now, unfortunately, because of the way that this little area is laid out, Wadon doesn't cover Igil, and if I put the fort and the capital in Izuki, that wouldn't cover Chingueti. Though it would cover the origin point of barbs up here. Barbs would start here, and they'd come this direction. So, there is an argument for moving the capital from Wadon to Izuki and making Izuki the fort. Izuki is camels, though, and... Uh, let's see, camels aren't a farm tile. Camels are better than horses for... Well, maybe. Either way, I know I know for sure this won't be a fort down here, so let me just go and destroy that immediately. And then we will um, wait for the Igil claim and proceed on to Igil. All right, <laughs> these poor guys out here in the desert. Pretty brutal. All right, we may actually be on track to have enough PI for the... Uh, the um, Divine Sacrifice, when that is ready to go. Let's see. That any longer. The Sankata Republic. Our current Atakan Takotama heads both the Sankata Dynasty and the traditionalist faction in the Assembly, garnering him a reputation for putting his own family's interests ahead of the states in important matters. Jeruru is an important, equally prominent politician representing the Democrats, Click and has brought his accusation of nepotism and corruption involving the Sankata Fold to the floor of the Assembly, citing their dominance. This is a lore-accurate accusation. Look at this. We've got... I mean, he really should be calling this the Suwadi Republic, but then, you know, Tukudma is a Sankata, so it makes more sense that he's pointing that out. Okay, um... Let's investigate the effects of this closely. So, Democrats and Trads have similar levels of Senate support. Democrats are a little stronger. Trads have much more room to grow, but they are growing much more. So, losing approval with them and gaining it with the Democrats is probably better. The Sankata family members all losing five loyalty isn't going to be great for PI on the opposite side. Let's see. Um... Actually, I only have one Sankata character who's an officer, and she has really high loyalty. So this is actually still the better option, to be completely honest. I don't want to lose PI or approval with the Dem. So Tokoroma must be leashed, says Tokoroma about himself in the third person, apparently. All right, that did give me some approval. That's good. All right, come on. 96, this should round up to 100. There it is. All right, let's go to war with Igil. Take a drawer. There we go. Okay, I'm I'm now worried that the mission is not going to work because I thought it would trigger when I had a majority of the province, which I do now have, but maybe I need to own all of the province that is ownable. The rest of the province is, of course, not habitable, so I may need to mod the mod between episodes as I contemplated might be necessary. We shall see. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and assault this immediately. We will win. There's no chance we won't win. We did, in fact, win. Okay, good. Okay, Tokoroma Sankara the Buglers led his men to glorious victory during the Siege of Igil. The enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to Sana to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war like that cause us back into Black Tudor. Now, Tokoroma greatly blames the people and one like the Let the looting be gentle. <laughs> Had a little uh, brain, brain failure there. Okay. What's not a failure is my war with Igil. We're going to go ahead and conquer this territory. On the 1st of May, we have, to, we have to wait for the diplomat to come back. <laughs> we'll just hang out here for a moment. Don't mind me. Okay, okay, here we go. Super Beast. Igil Adrar to Timbuktu. Look at that. Yes! I 
I'm so glad I checked the code. I thought this is what would happen, but I was nervous for a second there. All right, boys, we are in business right here. The Igil Elite, get out of my country. Give me back my EE of zero. Very nice. There we go, all right. Now, Timbuktu has fully secured the province that is inhabitable. Let's go ahead and destroy this fort. Okay, secure a drawer. <laughs> the condition all settled provinces in Sigilmasa is owned by us, allegedly. All right, we're gonna gain this glitchy, unlocalized uh, bonus for the Wadon territory. That's fine. Um, it could be any territory. It's very, very minor. All right. <laughs> Okay, so we have a couple of options here. I think getting a claim on them directly is the best option. I want to take this territory directly. I could bribe them. I do have the money for this. And this would... Um, this would require me to then independently make them my subject, which I couldn't do. I don't think so. Let me just get a claim on them. Let's not mess around here. The claim should work through dip range. In fact, actually... Hold on. No, oh, no, I don't have any, any connectors. Okay, never mind. But it, the claim should work through dip range. And if it doesn't, we, I'll need to figure something else out. Uh, all right, let's establish a claim. One year to set this up. Cost 20 PI. All right, I'm, I'm now not going to have enough PI to do Divine Sacrifice, but this is obviously way, way, way more important to get this claim going. Sigil Masa is a valuable site in the trans saharan trade route, and the wealth of many of our merchants already depend on it. Better if it were in our hands than anyone else. All right, let's get that going. And we, we're going to have enough time to re-raise. In fact, I'll get more more guys from re-raising. Not that it matters, because Sigil Master is so weak. But I will go ahead and lower, so I have a year of recovery. All right, five months, that's completely fine. Five months for them as well. Lower the army maintenance, and honestly, I, I should probably be able to lower gar garrison, but this is such a small economic gain. I, I would... My... My day would be ruined if I had a fort that were sieged by, like, barbs, and I didn't have garrison. So let's just... Let's just take it easy there. <laughs> okay, so having done that, this is going. This can't be undone, so I can now mess around here without any concern. So the question would be, why did this switch? Why did you switch this off of, huh? When did this happen? Okay, we have mysterious policy change that I didn't remember ordering, but I guess she just changed it on her own. That's very strange. Well, I, I probably should switch this back then. Um, probably onto harsh treatment. Oh, maybe it's because new territory was gained. I, I mean, this, these like out here territories are. You know what? I don't think I changed it before. I think this was already on acquisition of wealth, as it were. Yeah. You know what? I, I was thinking about this province down here, which is its own separate province. So never mind. <laughs> Sorry to accuse you on without a basis, uh, Kalia. Um, but I should probably switch this back. I should probably switch it to harsh treatment. Yeah, that is going to be necessary. That's even more PI loss. If, um, hold on, did I? Oh, you know what? This mission probably spends PI at the end of it. Yeah, on completion, 20 PI. So never mind. I may get, I might get an, enough PI in time, but we'll see. Um, okay, point 21 is manageable, and they're going to demote, which will be the real prize. Yeah. Okay. Um. Wadon or Azuki? Now, Wadon feels better because it's on the route, but the, I, the scenarios where I'm going to be marching armies along the desert route are so hard to even really fathom. I don't think I'll ever send army... I mean, I'm about to send armies against Sigil Masa later, so maybe I shouldn't speak so soon, but the scenarios where the actual route needs to be fortified specifically are basically not comprehensible. I think between the two spots, Azuki is a little more important to fortify because it then prevents Igil from being sieged by the barbs who are going to spawn here. They have to come to the Izuki fort, which is going to buy me time to raise the levy to send up north. So I think, yeah, even though um, there's an argument that having camels be farmed here would be a little better, that f camels, they're going to need 17 slaves, which out here where I can't move pops anywhere, completely out of the question to get enough slaves up here for a camel farm. In fact, the mines for the salt is an extreme long-term goal at best. <laughs> okay, so with this in mind, it is going to be a lot of uh, loyalty, but I'm not going to gain any more territory here to move it around, so let's go ahead and move the capital to Azuki and fortify it. Alright, 
that is the right call to make, I believe. I guess I could set up a colony here to move population. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. That's too much, too much shenanigans for that. Okay, now we go back and check and see any trade goods. Ooh. That's my own salt. I guess I could, I guess I will just import my own salt. I guess someone else might buy my salt. Let me wait and see if someone buys my salt. And also, let me offer my grain for the market again. I really like people to buy my goods. But, ooh. okay. People want my salt, at least. That's a good start. Let's trade with Kudu, I guess. How about my grain? <laughs> Make it a package deal. Let's, uh, let's package your goods together in violation of FCC guidelines. <laughs> Um, I don't know one wants my grain. Maybe someone will eventually want my grain. Grain's nice, you know, it's food, it's money. Why wouldn't you want my grain? Well, trying to sell my grain is giving me a migraine, so... <laughs> Let's just, uh, buy it from ourselves, I suppose. That'll have to do. <sighs> okay. I wonder if I'm going to actually, like, color in the Sahara if I own here. Probably not, actually, because these are uninhabitable, so I don't think... We're going to have little islands of Timbuktu out here in the desert, but that was always probably what was going to happen, honestly, with the way this works, so that's fine. All right, we do have... Um, yeah, I really would like to move some of these in, but I'm still not sure how that would work. Let's require Metropolis. Let's leave it for now. May 1st of 78 is the target date for that. How's my research going? Okay, we're actually approaching 125%, which means I need some more max research, or I mean max efficiency. Can I? Okay, here it is. So book binding, that's gonna be, okay, this is either or, so that's gonna be five texts to get to this. Although along the way, Triumphal Coins is really strong to get manpower and a boost. I could grab Equal Integration first. This is a ways away. Where else can I get more um, research efficiency? No. This one's way down here, so that's not going to be for a long time. This one is technically four away. I could get to this next round, amazingly. Let's see, I would need due process, so ruler pop gain, popularity gain. Unintegrated culture group happiness, that'd be quite nice. Great temple will be unlocked. This is probably what I should do next to ensure I'm still uh, using research, gaining research efficiently. I think that's probably the way to do it. Because at some point, if I'm not expanding fast enough, my research efficiency will not be met. So I need to either keep expanding or uh, continue increasing my research efficiency ceiling. That is the uh, that is the goal there. I do have a lot of money built up right now, but not too much to spend it on. So I'll get some more building slots at least. I could make... I guess the issue is PI. Like, I need PI to do everything that I want to do. The story of my life right now. Um... that. I could do one of these actions, couldn't I? Legal reforms might be not the worst idea. Although at the moment, it would be inefficient because Democrats have so much approval. You know, I've really turned things around. Democrats are very happy with me now, which is amazing <laughs> with my, all my tyranny. I put the work in, you know, this, this election cycle. Essentially, all that needs to happen is you need to just have a Democrat in one of the two positions, and then they're, like, way easier to manage. But, um, yeah, this has been pretty successful so far. I've got the manpower. I mean, I don't really want to spend the PI. Getting a bunch of citizens in my cities is nice. Pop promotion speed bonus is good. Noble happiness would be manageable with my current good noble happiness in my main urban core. Democrat approval gain per month is really high. This would be really good to do, especially if I'm going to gain a lot of tyranny and upset the Democrats. Let me wait and see what'll happen with that. For now, all of my attention is focused on Sigil Massa. This is the prize of this episode. I really hope I can get the claim on them, and it's there's no like weird, funny business with that. This appears to grant that, and once I have the claim, I mean, they're within dip range, so I can interact with them, right? Like, I can't interact with people that are out of dip range. 
So I should be able to declare on them once I have the claim. In fact, I could have declared on them without the claim. I guess that's something to keep in mind is that even without claims, I can still declare on tags without like a claim set up, even if I can't reach them to get a claim set up. So worth noting that that is actually still an option. Not a very good option. I mean, this is a very inefficient thing to do, but it is, oh, hold on. Sigil Mouse actually has feudatories? Really? That's interesting. Um, they're actually going to call in Taghaza. What? <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm not mad about that. That's actually really, really good. This is uh, a way for me to fight these guys without having to claim them separately. I was completely not expecting uh, Sigil Masa to have vassals, but I don't think they did earlier. When I looked at them earlier, I didn't see that. Maybe I just missed it, but... I don't know, by the way, how Sigilmasa got these guys as vassals. These guys do have more population, so maybe they just beat them in a war, but do they even have enough for one army? I mean, they'd have to siege a fort, so that wouldn't have worked. Maybe they set it up diplomatically. They may have their own custom mission, because they're like a Sahara tag, so who has like a special mechanic, so maybe something like that happened. Either way, this is actually really, really good that this is the case. I'll be able to get Sigilmasa, Taghaza, and Tuat all at the same time in the Sigilmasa war. In fact, this war is going to be quite the ordeal. This may spill over into the next episode because of the travel time involved. To, I may actually march north from Adawane and come north from this route to get to Sigilmasa. That might be the better way to do it, honestly, and I'll have to siege this um, manually. Yeah, this will definitely go over into the next episode at this rate. That is very interesting. Um, I don't know exactly what to make of that, but that that works for me. I'm not going to be mad about that. In fact, I, I can probably just assault these places um, one by one. Uh, we'll see. We shall see. We're waiting still for a first of May. Very interesting discovery. Don't know what to make of that, but I will. Uh, I will take it. Also, I guess I should I should look and see. So, Kaba Suari is expected to be the next Atacon. He's the current censor. This would be a really good Atacon to come in. High Martial and High Charisma for more Tyranny Loss. He can take over the big Sahara War pretty effectively from Takoma. He is super corrupt, though, which isn't great. Yeah, he's had free hands this whole time. Okay, well, I guess he's been allowed to have free hands. Off to sanction him. Let, let me come back to that in a moment. Twisting the knife. Tsukuruma Sankala, the bugler for reasons not only to himself, has begun to view his co Atakan Jaburu Tielabele, with jealousy and distrust, I, even having them in the same room. Of all the people that you could rival, oh, this is just... just not the, not the move. Um, Jaburu, despite his very low loyalty earlier, he's so happy about the Democrat ascent in their approval. He's actually still at 65 with a rivalry. Now, the real problem is that the rivalry may result in actions by my Otacon, but I don't have the PI to spare. I mean, I could tell him to knock it off, but I don't... Actually, maybe I can't... No, no, I can't. It's on this side over here. Remove rival. 30 PI for this, when I only have to make it two more years with this rivalry, is not worth it, to be completely honest. It is not worth it. Okay, um, also I just realized I forgot to talk about the traits of these characters, but you know what, we're already halfway through the episode. Um, actually more than halfway, so I'm not going to worry about it now. Uh, you can you can pause the video and read this if you are, if you're concerned. But I, I would have done that at the opening, but I had so much else to talk about with the, uh, the desert plans. <laughs> I just got getting distracted, so that's fine. Um, anyways, over here, still waiting on that. I could even hire mercs to do assaults with me. That would speed things up. It might be not the worst idea, honestly. Um, I have plenty of money to work with. And a big infantry heavy merc stack could really make a big difference. Let's see. This merc stack with the with the uh, supply train might actually... No, that's going to take over my army, though, is the problem. Yeah, the issue is all the merc leaders have such high... Okay, this guy has eight. That's still lower than Takonama, so they're going to take over the sieges. 
Let's let's investigate and see if this is even like possible. Does anyone have seven <laughs> marshal? Okay, six marshal on this guy. I could hire this guy. He'd be bringing in fourteen more um, infantry. This would this would allow me to assault all three territories one by one. It's going to take me like a year just to travel around, let alone do the sieges. So, I think powering through this quickly might not be the worst idea. This is definitely manageable. I think I should hire a mercenary force for this war. So let me actually get the mercenary force hired and ready preemptively, because I know it's going to take a long time for them to build up their morale. Let's see. Um, first of May. Yeah, let me hire them now. Let me hire them now, and then actually I should raise my army too, and then have everyone head north preemptively. I guess the thing is... The one thing that could be a problem is if Sigil Masa breaks their feudatory relationship, or the way around, if they break them with Sigil Masa while I'm en route, then I have to like backtrack, and that's gonna take a long time. Or get, uh, I, I could probably just get. Uh, actually, they, they won't give me military access. Hmm. Okay. Well, e either way, um, let me actually double check really quick. These guys do come in because they're a subject that does count. Okay. All right. Um, I'm gonna hire the Mercs. I think that is the right thing to do here hire uh, the mercs that are available currently. Honestly, even the 2k strength of this perk force, if they weren't already under contract, wouldn't be the, the worst thing to secure. Um, yeah, nothing cheaper available. Well, no, you're too high on Marshall. This merc force is very battered. They're not going to be available. Okay, 3k with these guys. This would be a lot, lot cheaper. Much, much, much cheaper. Honestly, we're, we're, so we're talking about six more cohorts. That's another 3,000 infantry. The 3,000 infantry plus my t Ghana and Gen A levies. So that's going to be, let's see, 2,000 infantry, 2,500. So it's basically doubling my infantry strength, which against three forts in a row. Now, only one of them will be on partial garrison because I'll catch the first one off guard. And the second one will be recovering by the time I get to it. But then uh, Sigil Masa will be basically at full garrison, likely, when I get to them. I think I think the smaller Merc Force is going to work. I just need to supplement my, uh, my assaulting strength. Where are these guys? These guys are very far away. So I should hire them now, is the, the takeaway of that. <laughs> Alright, let me go ahead and hire um, Mamadou Benate. This guy will be below the Marshal of my main guy. Now, if um, Tacoma actually loses Marshal, we'd be in a bit of a problem. So having a Merc leader that is 8 Marshal, which is the guy up here, uh, that is a 6 Marshal, I mean, would be a little better. Can I... Can I buy these? No, I can't, because they're already under a contract. They're not going to leave to a neutral party. Okay. This would have been perfect, honestly, but uh, that's not, not how it worked out. Ooh, you know what? Oh, there's a Merc Force here. That's actually... These guys actually have Merc armies who live here. That is interesting. I could actually hire... Hold on, what's my Merc limit? I have two. I could hire both of these Merc Forces. I don't think I need to hire both of them. I guess I could buy one off if they get hired. I guess the concern would be if either of these Merc Forces are hired by the tags here. That could throw the math off quite a bit. These would both be safe hires on the Marshal side. And their strength is pretty small, and it's all infantry. I think I may actually hire both Merc forces and then bring them down um, to my... Because they'd be black flag until they got to my territory. That is, that's the other concern. Right, and then maybe let's not be too fancy like that. Um, this 3k Merc force over here is looking a bit more, a bit more reasonable. Let's hire them. Alright, come on over, come over to Taraka, it's going to take them a very long time, and we wait, because we don't need to raise our army quite yet. Also, once I have the claim, I don't need to declare the war immediately, so we're not like in a gigantic rush, but it'd be nice for things to line up like that. It's such slow going around here, oh my gosh. Yeah, we're so far inland, everything is just so enormously slow, but we are making the best of it that we can. Barbs are rising up. Not great. What are we looking at? Not great is the answer. What do we have here? Um, 
Zadama Bedek, so the religion is right, but Zadama, okay, that's a same culture group religion. I prefer if you left. Let's see. Honestly, these areas are not very developed. Um, you know, honestly, go for it. Um, right religion, wrong culture group. Or wrong culture, but right culture group. I think that's okay. I think it's okay. <clears throat> you can just add population. That's fine. Nothing strategically bad over here for if you're doing that. Um, yeah, there's a Zarbo pop uh, tribesman. That's fine. As long as they don't uh, catch my mercenaries coming in, we should be okay. Where is the revolt army going, by the way? Looks like they're about to lose to the loyalists. That's not too surprising. Territory, we can we go. set this to regular maintenance. A bit more expensive, but more than manageable. It's worth it for the long term goals that I have, of course. Once they get to around here, let's raise the regular army and some. Actually, let me raise the Gene army preemptively. I'm a bit nervous about them being too delayed. And we'll raise our regular army once we get a bit closer with the Mercs. These guys come and siege Houndu, which is fortified. I will pay them off because I don't want them to actually sack a, a city that they siege. Okay, we have got the claim. Let's verify that. We do have the claim. Although, do we? It says war without CB, but I have a, a claim here, so maybe it always displays that. Okay, let me come back to that later. What would this do? Nothing. Okay, let's uh, let's get that one after we get that. Okay, so that's fine. Maybe let's wait for the tick and verify how the UI looks. I have the claim, so it shouldn't display it as though I don't have a claim. Let me let me check on someone I have a claim on as well. Oh, hold on, wait. I it doesn't say that I have a claim on them. Huh? I have a war goal, but I don't have a CB. Hold on. That gave me a war goal. Does it not give me a CB? Is there is there a difference in this context? We already have claims on them. Okay, so the game thinks I have a claim on them. And yet, it's not displaying that I have a claim on them for some reason. Let's, let's wait for the tick and see what happens. If I have to spend the, the stability, I will. But it doesn't seem as though... Maybe the idea is that I still have to spend the stability because it's a no CB declaration, but this opens the door? But I could have just done a, a show superiority war if I just made the door open. So. Let, not entirely sure what's going on. Uh, again, th these custom missions in this mod are not super... Um, they're not um, super clean coding-wise, so there, there are some strange things going on. But we shall see what's going on in a bit. Wait for our mercs to arrive, and then we'll raise our army and send, send them all off north. Kaba Suwari, by the way, is so much more supported than his uh, expected Kaladak on Kondalon that he will likely come in no problem. She'll bring in some additional finesse for the national effect, but his 
uh, attributes are really strong otherwise, so I think that is completely fine. We'll be looking at a double trad um, Otacon ship as well, for what that's worth. 10th of July. Let's go ahead and raise our army after the tick. Loud. These guys are pillaging my land more, that's fine. Okay, we have 8k, 8.5k force here. Let's head north. It's going to be a pretty brutal march to the desert, but we will be getting to some habitable desert shortly. Okay, let's check again and see what's going on here. So I think, I essentially don't know what's going on here. We have a war goal, but we don't have a CB. And I've never previously thought about the fact that these might be different mechanics, a CB and war goal. I don't know if this is intentional. I'm probably going to have to purposely like, do a no CB war to get Siljimot. Now, I would probably have done this even without the feudatory situation, but getting two feudatories um, as part of the war does make this a bit less of a, of a frustrating th situation. I can't tell if this providing a war goal but not a CB is on purpose, or if this was another issue with the, the mission tree. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, um, I wouldn't be able to reach Sigil Masa normally anyways to get a claim like through fabrication, so I don't really have any other options here. I could have always done a superiority war goal, but uh, taking it in, is going to make it, a, you know, that's a better war goal for this kind of war. So let's just roll with it. <laughs> I don't know, don't know exactly if this was planned, but we're going to proceed and uh, get ourselves some new territory and uh, open that door to the Mediterranean at long last. This rebel army hanging out up here is not looking too good, by the way. Real, uh, real, oh, there they go. <laughs> been uh, deleted from existence right there. Okay, the barbs are leaving, oddly enough. I don't know where they're off to, but that's fine by me. Around we go. Petitioner approaches. A mature individual by the name of Bari Sankara approaches our Archon in private this morning. This is the governor of Jene, by the way. In a hushed voice, he spoke of a vision of the near future, where he was found by his loved ones. Uh... Having been impaled by a battering ram, with shaking hands he offered all his worldly goods to the state in return for our protection. Ooh, okay. Um, 136, 163 gold is a lot higher than previously, and we're talking about the same trade-off of stability or gold. Now, I don't have... No, I, I do have the PI. Okay, I thought it would be more expensive. Let me go ahead and do Divine Sacrifice right now. Yeah, let's just do it immediately. No need to second-guess that. Stability is now quite high and still trending up. What's our... We're probably at 125. No, not quite. Okay, so we can still gain more from stability, research-wise. But I think this much gold is hard to pass up. How awful we shall take good care of him. A little bit of greed. It's going to be reinvested into the nation shortly, so no need to uh, be too judgmental of that, I don't think. Okay. Okay, hold on. Now we have a CB on them. Okay, that's interesting. I did get the CB, but not right away. Um, again, I, I I don't think it's meant. To, I think it's meant to give you the CB. I'm I'm, I'm I'm not sure what happened to give me the CB. I thought I already had a, a a monthly tick. Okay, well I do have a regular CB on them now, which is perfect. That's exactly what I need. So this this should no longer destroy my stability to do this. So that, that's very good. <laughs> I will happily take that uh, development over um, having to do a no CB declaration, which I could have done anyways, so this, this does make sense that it works like this. Okay. Very, very slow going to get up here. We are traveling basically the length of, like, Greece to just travel through this route, so it's uh, understandable that we're going slow, but this is, uh, this is quite dire. Um, I could really do with some movement boosts in my... Uh, in my tech tree or something, but not meant to be, unfortunately. We'll just have to go. Ooh, what do we have over here? Hmm, interesting. Also, Egypt is... Ooh, Sebaste? Really? Okay. Egypt is destroying Meadow. I think this war is going to end soon. 
We have Serenica has formed over here. Interesting. Is this Greek Serenica? Huh. I guess it would have been colonized by now, but I guess uh, I guess that does make sense. What else is going on in the world? Carthage is still clinging on. We've got a big Basatis over here. <laughs> Very strange. But our desert journey begins. We're already having food problems. Oh boy, yeah, all this all this infantry strength is uh, chowing down through our food supply real quick. We need to get up here pronto. We've got plenty of manpower to work with, but this is definitely not looking too good um, on the food situation. We may not be able to make it up here in time before we run out of, of strength from lack of food. Hmm. We'll have to see how things are looking after we take these two tiles. Hmm, lots of things to contemplate here. But fortunately, once I finish the Sigil Massa mission, we can then do the um, the Joloff mission that is uh, waiting in my queue. Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, looks like uh, Kaba and Kondalan are looking pretty set in. Kondalan may have a next quite likely successor, but I can't see it, so I don't know for sure if that's true or not. All right, looks like 23rd of February is going to be our declaration date. And unless they hire mercs, which may throw off my plans, and I'll have to spend some money to buy off the mercs, I think we should be in the clear for some uh, some shenanigans up here. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Sigil Massa declare the war. They're going to call in their feudatories, which they should do after a day or so, to take Sigil Massa. They're, we're going to call in Niata. Technically, not that I expect them to participate. Here we go. All right, we begin. And incidentally, uh, parties are pretty fine with all this. Let's wait for the war. Or they're in the war already because uh, they're predators. They join automatically. Never mind, they're not allies. Okay, here we come. Now I just need these guys to not hire both of these merc stacks because that could really throw me off. I do have the money ready if I need to pay them off, but I prefer. In fact, uh, extra morale would help me with the assaults, but money-wise, it would be expensive. And I don't have the morale built up yet, and I need to build it up, so it wouldn't really matter anyways. Let's just go in on normal morale and see if we can get away with that. I genuinely am worried I'm going to experience 8,000 casualties to desert attrition and running out of food. Like, we're getting pretty low down at this point. Could present a problem. I can't recover. I guess I can recover while sieging? I have to think about that. It's so far to get up there. <laughs> That's a, uh, let's see, 21. We've arrived. Okay. This should be, yeah, they even got a take of recovery. Let's just assault it. A Archon Scorn. First, we have some politics. The elected leaders of Timbuktu, Takoma Sankara the Bugler, and Jururu Chilabeli are meant to act as balances to one another's influence. However, Jururu has been frustrated by Takoma and his constant placement of the tra traditionalist interests above those of the Democrats. This is a lore accurate complaint, by the way, from these characters. If Takoma were to offer some con concessions to Jururu, however trivial, it would go a long way to alleviating the worst of the resentment. At the moment, Democrats are pretty happy. Um. In fact, this would lower my Senate support slightly, but I have, well, Democrats are not gaining that much. I don't want to spend the PI, and loyalty on Jeru is not going to be a problem within a couple of months. Not, not really. I can manage it. Um, let me lose the approval with the Dems. I think that's fine. Very minor. Shouldn't be the end of the world. All right, the sacking of Tiao Deni. This place was not destroyed. Very good. Tukarama Sankara, the bugler, led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Tiao Deni. The enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to slaughter how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war are likely to cause us back into Maktu to admire Tukarama greatly. Believing such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Gentle looting, please. All right, let's, let's all stay here for the tick, and hopefully... Hopefully recover food. We're in occupied territory, so I think we should be recovering food. Let's see what happens to our food. Uh, I don't... Th yeah, we didn't recover food. Okay. Mistakes were made. Alright, let's head up to Takaza. 
We still have a little bit of food, but we're not going to make it to uh, Sigilmasa before we run out of food very early on. And the question is going to be, will the Desert Attrition actually prevent us from assaulting Sigilmasa once we get there? We have enough strength that I think we should make it, but I'm genuinely not sure. This might be a close call. And if we our army dies to the Sahara on the way there, that would first of all be poetically appropriate, but would also be strategically frustrating for sure. Let's go grab Takaza and uh, and see what we are looking at here. Any trade goods for me yet? Nope. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. All right. More barb activity down here. That's fine. This area is fine to lose. I mean, I think we're we're doing conversion down here at the moment, so that's fine. Yeah. Also, PI-wise, what am I saving my PI for right now? Let me save my PI for post-election uh, political expenditures, which will likely uh, be a number of things <laughs> I'll have to spend PI on. Governor policy switching and whatnot. So let's just save up our PI for now. Okay, these guys aren't going to hire the mercs. That's good. I was worried they'd get funny, or they'd get ideas about that, but not going to end up playing out. That's perfect. I need as much strength as possible for this arduous trek north. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is going to be a, I uh, can't even see that far, <laughs> it's such a distance. Um, we've arrived, wait for these guys, okay. This should be fine to assault. Is there any reason I'd want to actually siege this instead of assaulting? Here we do have 2.30% attrition. However, I think, do we recover food while, see no, 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 we don't. We recover manpower while sieging, but we don't have a manpower problem in our armies yet. Let's yeah, this attrition is way too high. Let's do an assault. Just get this thing taken care of. Should still have plenty of strength. Really? Ooh. Must be the infantry morale combined lower too much i i don't understand how this is possible Ooh, okay that is a problem all right um you know what this actually might not be a problem let me hold on 96 gold that's cheaper than hiring him directly Five Marshall. All right, if this guy joins the team, we may have a solution to all of our problems in our life. Solution denied. Oh, oh God! All right, the mercenary band led by Bommelkar Sifit has callously refused. This is the world's least intelligent mercenary. Like, can you imagine? You just watched this miserable desert village get obliterated by a massive doom stack from from Timbuktu. And then you're like, no, I won't join you, Timbuktu. <laughs> I care about money. All right, this is uh, all right. Serious problem. All right, once a year, so he's not going to finish the siege very fast. But we now do have a um, a new problem here. All right, let's wait for the tick, and then we'll do a uh, do an assault after the tick. Get this thing over with. What? <laughs> really? Also, where is he going? He is off somewhere. I don't know where he's going off to, but very strange. Very strange. Yeah, this this delay is going to cause attrition problems for sure. Oh boy. It's very hard to believe that I'm not winning these assaults. I don't know. Oh, you know what? 70% fort defense is probably a contributing factor. What on earth? Oh, they have Borderlands. Who is this? That's supposed to be a character. I can't click on them. Chagak Tech 49173. Some Eldritch <laughs> code being displayed for me. Alright. That's great. There we go. Alright, is the siege complete? No assault for me, I guess, but that's fine. Okay. With that done, let's investigate how bad we're, of a situation we're in right now. Everyone's completely out of food. Infantry-wise, we're looking at, let's see, 1,400. 
rounding up, that's 1,700. And then 1,700, so that is 24. 3,400 infantry? Not a ton, but if the attrition is split between everyone, we should be able to make it to Sigil Masa before everyone's dead. Now, we're going to be able to maintain the 2k necessary to siege them. Fine. Like, the infantry is just going to matter. Oh my god, there's a hundred sirens outside. <laughs> um, the infantry is only going to matter for assaulting purposes. And also, these mercs are inexplicably leaving. I don't know where they're going. There's nothing over here. Like, what? where are you going? <laughs> Strangest mercenary. I mean, this guy did just decline an offer from... The famously wealthy Timbuktu, so he's clearly not the smartest mercenary leader, but morale will recover over the trip. In fact, let me go ahead and bite the bullet. I'm increasing pay. This is actually not that bad, uh, oddly enough. I'm going to increase pay to ensure morale uh, is heightened. We're gonna make. We're gonna go for broke. We're gonna push for it. We're gonna see if this is successful next episode, but I gotta do something here. This is definitely a, uh, a closer situation than I would have preferred. Fortunately, I only have to fight these wars once. Once I secure this land, no one else is ever coming in here, so it's just a, uh, a one-time situation. Tribal proposition. Our tribal neighbor, Yada, our feudatory, has started investing a lot of their treasury into opening up the borders between our two nations. Hopefully this will prove beneficial for us as well, that their tribesmen are somewhat more unruly than we are used to. We should keep Yada in mind, as they could prove good friends in the future as well. Surely only good things can come from this. Okay, I will happily get a little bit of gold for them. That's nice. Now, I could also hire these mercs. Um, they can't decline because they're not under contract. This would give me 2k more infantry, which would 100% for sure secure an assault if they get there with a lot of their strength left. I think the main thing this merc force could provide is their full food bar. They're going to have all of their food ready to go. I think I'm going to actually play it extremely safe here and also hire these mercs too. You can just... Uh, hold on. you're going to be behind. That's fine. I mean, you, you head up this direction as well. Now, my economy is going to suffer for a while while this is going on, but I, I, I've I been burned so badly by the Sahara Wars, I'm taking no chances at all. I'm over, over, you know, bolstering my strength here. I mean, I was struggling to fight a war over, like, this portion of the Sahara a few episodes ago. Now we're talking about crossing the entirety of, like, West Africa to get up here. So we are taking no risks that we can possibly avoid. It's an expensive safety measure, but it is an important safety measure just to be sure that there is no funny business awaiting us. These trade routes are worth every gold coin that we're spending beyond what we may need to in order to secure this. All right, Sigil Masa wants peace. No, I'm not agreeing to your peace deal until I get your territory. All right, here we come. Can I join in as I get to this tile? Maybe. We shall see. Probably not. Nope, too far. That's fine. Alright, the death march <laughs> resumes. 4.2% attrition. Good googly moogly. That is pretty bad. But fortunately, we've got the manpower to withstand. We have full manpower right now to withstand this extreme attrition. Right, it's not as bad without everyone there, but pretty bad stuff for sure. Definitely not the best. Oh, here come the mercs again. Uh, that could be a problem. I don't think I can do much about this. It, it take way too long to double back and go kill them. I think what I should do is wait for this guy to allow another buy-off attempt and then try to buy him off again. Or he might go somewhere else. I mean, who knows what he's going to do. Actually, he can't because it's a zone of control, so I don't know what I can or will do about the mercs. If they get a breach down here, I'm going to weep, but I can't do much about this. I'm already so committed to the route. No. We shall see. Yeah, this is not, not great. I definitely need to do an assault to get ahead of this by the time I get there. And I may not even get there in time. Also, let's double check and see. Um, looks like uh, Kaba and Kondalan are still um, 
are still uh, on track to be our um, our new Atacons. Alright, we are trudging along, suffering extreme casualties on the way. Yikes. Right, you guys are running out of strength very slowly. Alright, if you get a breach, no can breach. Food shortage. Status quo would have been better, but food shortage is not as bad as it could have been. That is for sure. Alright, go, 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 go. Collection coming up. I'm aware. I am, in fact, aware of that. Come on. <laughs> Getting there halfway there. <laughs> yeah, hiring those mercs was the right call. We are already yeah, really, really dying from attrition. I may not even make it with enough strength, though. Like, this desert is just unfathomably brutal. Water shortage? Oh, no. <laughs> this is grim. Um, I should have been paying attention to when I first tried to buy this guy off. I just need to keep an eye on it. I could just take these tiles and a piece still that I do now, before this is taken, and then I just tack them in a couple of years. Really? Oh, we're losing hundreds to attrition. This is so brutal. I really just wanted to get this in one go, but this Merc Force is really, like, destroying my plans. Man. Um, this will have to be something we figure out next time. Unfortunately, we're not going to get there in time. Come on. No breach. Status quo. Water shortage again. Oh, my God. This is this is just disgusting. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, this one Merc Army has... Like, I should have hired this Merc Army in retrospect. I had the money... I should have just said, you know what, I am I think I'm being overcautious, I'm being undercautious. I need to hire every merc force to just stuff the desert with men so that someone gets up here in time. Alright. We need to have the best siege luck in the universe to avoid a, a problem down here, because they're going to retake that. And possibly depopulate, which is actually even worse. I don't think it would depopulate, but I'm not 100% sure. Also, it is now January 1st. Unpopular console. Never one to challenge the status quo or even to do anything remotely considered interesting. Kabasuari has been elected Atacon by a slim majority of dull buffoons and wine-stained togas. It would be fair to say, perhaps, that Kaba does not hold the confidence of the people in the same manner as the stoic rulers of old. Okay, um, let's investigate and see how bad things are looking. Uh, I think they're not looking that bad. Kabasuari was elected to office while ruler glorious nation. 8, 4, 10, and uh, eight. Trads are in control. Once again, with Omen Power as the outcome from that. I'm going to go ahead and spend the gold for this one. I get a little bit of popularity with Kava, and I, I don't want this one mainly. So, the people simply are the circuses. Okay. There is a lot going on right now. There's a lot of crises happening in our northern war, but and uh, possibly some crisis happening internally with our politics, but that'll have to wait for the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.